Okay. Hey, we're here. We're on Wednesday. Hi, everybody. Jenny and Tiffany here. So excited to be able to prophesy to those of you that are jumping on today. Um, Thanks for joining us. And while we're getting started and waiting for people to jump on here, we want to share with you, we are so excited about the rally schedule picking up this fall and then through 2022. And we have many cities that we have scheduled and we're coming based on the invitation that you guys extended to us in those cities. So thank you so much. Next up, we have September 16th and 17th, and we are in St. Louis. Okay, you guys, I want you to think about this. I want you to think about how far away are you from there? Um, Who can you get to get in the car with you? Some of you maybe even want to grab a flight and meet us in St. Louis. It's going to be absolutely incredible. It's going to be amazing. So um, any words about the rallies? I'm just super excited to um, continue to take territory Mm -hmm. for the kingdom. And I think um, a lot of you have expressed too, just the desire to know how to you know, minister Mm -hmm. and cast out demons and prophesy and all of this stuff. And there's a lot of you that God's really calling and stirring, stirring up on the inside to be a part of what we're doing. And so I really feel like some of you do need to get on an airplane and get trained up and get equipped and, you know, bring your, bring your daughters, bring your, you know, some of you want to bring husbands and, you know, there's just a desire to be equipped. And that is part of the rally. We're going to go and we're going to, we're going to take ground for the kingdom. But, but the other thing that we do is we, we, um, we help set the captives free, you know, so there's an area of your life that is not, you know, fully walking in freedom. That is one of the reasons that you would come. And then if there's a desire to help set others free and to really get equipped in ministry, I think that's a really great, um, investment to get a plane ticket and to join us at as many as you can, Yeah, honestly. For sure. And then, um, invite, you know, invite, um, friends and family that need a fresh breath, of what God's doing and need, um, just that, that surge of revival in their bones, you know, invite those people. Like in my mind right now, I'm visualizing someone flying from Texas coming and inviting a family member that maybe lives in Indiana and you're meeting there. Yeah. That's what I'm visualizing right Mm -hmm. now is like calling up, you know, the people in your life and, and having them get on the plane and, and meet, meet you at these, these events. And so, um, yeah, we don't take it lightly. No, what we're doing. So yeah, well, it's interesting because a lot of times people ask us, and almost weekly we get a text message or a Facebook me- message that people are asking us, okay, how, you know, how are you guys getting your kids involved in ministry? Like, how are like, wait, your kids are a part of this. Your kids are doing, um, you know, doing this with you. We get that question. We also get the question of how can we learn right. to pray like you guys pray? How can we learn to cast out demons? How can we, you know? And so um, my my first answer to people is get to these rallies because mm-hmm. what's going to happen is it's not just like you're in a room and it's wonderful. You're actually getting an impartation and you're getting um, the assignments to go and do the work of the ministry. And yep. so, and get your kids there, mm-hmm. you know, um, especially if you have teens, um, preteens, get yeah. them there, especially around the age 10 or 11, they can really, they really can do well at a rally and they get very excited about it. They want to be a part of it. And, um, you know, your, your kids aren't going to automatically want to follow the things of God if they've never been exposed to it and exposed to the mm-hmm. things that um, you want them to be running in. So, uh, you know, th- we always did that. It was always about taking our kids. Like I have, um, I have two of mine that'll be coming to St. Louis. And every time it's like, I'm bringing one or two with me because, or more, right. Because I want them to see what God's up to. I want them to see signs and wonders and miracles. I want to know, I want them to know this God that, um, can do amazing things. And so yeah, these rallies are, are an amazing place for you to get equipped and that is really the ministry of Tetelestai and her voice is to um, gather people so they can encounter God and get equipped for the work of the ministry and then send people into their own personal mission field. Mm-hmm. So it's encounter, equip and send. And so thank you so much for being a part of this. St. Louis is going to be amazing. It's going to be incredible, you guys. So make sure that you pray about it. Go ask the Holy Spirit yeah. and say, Holy Spirit, yeah. am I supposed to be in St. Louis? And I, I kind of feel like I'm talking to a bunch of people that have never been to St. Louis. You're totally unfamiliar with St. Louis. So am I. I, <laughs> I was going to say, so are we. <laughs> I rolled through there one time and I was in and out, but um, I'm I'm not familiar with St. Louis. I don't know much about 
that mm -hmm. city, except for we had a dream and we were there doing a rally in the dream. And so um, I just know it's the right thing. And I just wonder who God is going to change their life forever and ever and ever. And That's so right. I, if you've been to a rally um, or even her voice, would you mind putting in the comments? We'd love for you to put in the comments just a quick, like, here's what happened for me. This is, you know, this is what I experienced. Maybe your quick testimony. We would love that. And then we can, you know, pop up some of these um, comments. That would be amazing. And, you know, Rachel and I were talking about this this morning because we want to make a promo video for these rallies. Yeah. And it's like, okay, in this promo video, we've got to tell people that we've, um, we've, we have witnessed deaf ears open. And then we just heard that there was somebody, not only in Chicago, mm -hmm that that happened, but yeah. there was somebody we just heard of in Orange County mm -hmm. um, that their ears opened. And so these signs, wonders and miracles are, That's this right. is amazing. It's We're not doing these rallies because we're bored and we just want to travel the country. <laughs> we are not bored. Nope, here. we have 10 kids yeah. between the two yeah. of us actually. It's a lot. <laughs> Definitely not bored. Yeah. Mm -mm. <laughs> a lot going on here. And so the reason that we're doing this is because we want to go and take territory, like yep. you said, Tiffany, for the kingdom, and then ultimately mobilize a million women to Washington because we believe that the hope of America is in the church. It's in the bride yeah. and um, the bride, um, the bride needs health. The bride mm -hmm. needs to be whole. The bride needs to be healed. And so we are, we're calling, we're calling on you to be there. We're calling on you to be a part of this. So maybe you didn't even consider it until now. And I want you to just pray and ask the yeah. Holy spirit. And some of you are going to jump on airplanes with three or four people and you're going to get your hotel room. You're going to get there and it's going to change not just your life forever, but you're going to come home and it's going to change your influence. It's going to change your leadership. It's going to change um, who you interact with and how you interact with people for them to encounter God. Mm -hmm. And so I believe that God wants to um, kind of, it, it's like a, you know, you, you come like tag, you're it, you know, you come to the rally, mm -hmm. you get this impartation and yeah. then you go home and God uses you to do these incredible things. So um, pray about it, ask God about it. And we don't want anybody to miss their divine appointment. All yeah. right. So we're going to prophesy. Um, we have so many more things we could announce Tiffany, but let's just prophesy. Let's yep. get going. Um, if you're part of our wake up dead, uh, book launch, we are so happy to have you. September 8th is the cutoff to make sure that you can get in on the merch item that we're going to send to the launch group. The launch group is going to have an eight week Bible study online. It will also be available on demand for those of you that join the launch. So go to wakeupdeadbook.com if you want to be part of the launch. And if you have a book inside of you and you need to write a book, then the intensive in September um, go ahead and go to john1930.com. Check that out. We have um, here at Crestview, we have a um, a Wednesday to a Saturday, mm -hmm. and we are going to just teach you, equip you, and bless you, and really help you organize the book that, um, that God wants you to write. Many people have a book in them, and so it is the time. I know that's something that God's doing right now is he's wanting the ministry of writing really to take yeah. um, a front seat instead of a back seat. So if that's you, go check that out on John 1930. And um, look at that intensive because it's going to be it's going to be amazing. There's going to be a lot of people that birth their book yeah. out of that intensive, that intensive retreat. So, mm -hmm. OK, we're going to prophesy. Um, let me look mm -hmm. here. Uh, Leah, um, I just want to read what you're saying here. God is doing something amazing through this ministry. Thank you. Her voice was incredible. And I can't wait for the next one. I can't make um, make it to I had three moving and three women coming with me to the Louisville rally praying they can make it to a future rally soon. That's awesome. Well, Leah, I, I just want to bless you um, for being a leader. Yeah. And that's what I'm hearing God say is Leah is a leader. Um, and I also sense that you there, like there's this line, there's, there's this line, this invisible line, and you step into the fullness of your influence and then you pull back mm -hmm. thinking, wait a minute, do I have that much influence? And can I round up people and can I get them to a rally or can I get them to a, you know, whatever, whatever God's asking you to lead them to, right? Like a Bible mm -hmm. study or a, or, but I, I just feel God say, don't underestimate your leadership and don't underestimate your effectiveness yeah. because now is the time, Leah, for you to lead and to gather. I'm hearing gather, 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 gather. 
gather them and lead them. Yeah. Lead them to Jesus, lead them to the place mm -hmm. where they're going to get their freedom, lead people to the place yes. where they're going to be encountered and do not back down and do not listen to the one or two people who don't take you serious. Do not listen to the one or two voices that make you feel like everybody else feels that way. There are some people I specifically hear there's three friends that um, God has assigned you to and you're to walk them into greater spaces with the Lord. And so um, just grab a hold of that leadership and run with it. It's so good. Yeah, um, I'll prophesy over Brittany. I do wanna mention this because I might forget later that there's one week left for early bird for St. Louis for registration. What's so just today? September mm -hmm. 2nd. Okay. So make sure you get your tickets before then so you can get that early bird price. Okay, so Brittany Seatman, um, what I saw for you was um, just this spirit of adoption that was coming over you, but not in the form that, um, you know, sounds literal, but like where you feel like once and for all that you are a daughter of the most high King. Amen. Like a, just like God has adopted you as his daughter. And um, you may have been feeling like, you know, there's just been a battle to just do all the things. And like, you, you almost feel like you're alone and you have to be, um, you have to be in control of everything. Otherwise it'll all fall apart. And um, the Lord is just saying like, allow me to fully sign the papers once and for all to adopt you as my daughter. And, um, and what you'll, what you'll receive is you'll receive the inheritance that is, um, that is, you're just in the kingdom. You are just, you are just one of his. And because you're one of his, you get to, um, enjoy what your father God has for you and you don't have to strive to make things happen. And so I just, um, I just pray against that striving, just that, that, um, just the, the angst, like the, you just, you, you're, it's wearing you out, honestly, is what I'm seeing. There's just a wear and tear that has been happening. And so allow God, um, and I do, I see a paper of adoption and I see him signing and I see you signing and you are his daughter. You are his princess. You are in the Royal family. You are chosen for such a time as this. You have a crown on your head and you can walk in full authority without Amen. striving, without weariness. And so I just bless you, Brittany, with that in Jesus name. Amen. I think, I think I saw Casey Simpson. Was that your last name, Casey? Uh, nope. Casey Hamilton. Um, I don't know there was a Simpson on here too, but Casey, this is for you, Casey Hamilton. Um, I heard when I saw your name, the case is closed. And I was asking the Lord more about that one, Tiffany, when you're delivering that word. And um, I heard something, something's kind of been in the balance, like something, you know, that, that, that the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light have been pulling against and really fighting for. And there's been a tug of war over something mm -hmm. in your life. And I heard God say that the courts of heaven have um, the, the case is dismissed. The case is closed. And so just agree with heaven right now, whatever it is. I don't know if it's financial. I don't know if it's relational. You know what it is. But God is saying the case is closed. It is Amen. done. And Come agree on. with that and be done with it. Yes, be Lord. done with the worrying. Be done with the um, with your mind going back and forth over it. Um, it is done. It is finished. And you can stand on that. And now just stand in faith. Just stand in faith in Jesus name. And then Barbara Moore, I saw you down here somewhere on the list. Yes, see, there you are. Um, Barbara, um, what I saw for you, and again, God uses people's names <laughs> to give me pictures, you know, Casey, case is closed. But um, I saw for you, Barbara, I saw like barbed wire fence and, you know, that that kind of fencing that you see around, um, around a, a prison. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it was that, you know, the rolled on the top. And um, then I saw you with these clippers and these wire cutters and you were clipping and cutting wow. down and you were not anxious about it. You were not um, using too much energy, mm -hmm. emotional energy to do this because you had the tool that was going to take it down. So you didn't have to be like, you know, you didn't have to work yourself up to get this fence down because you had the tool to do it. But even now what I'm seeing is... Um, Okay, what is this fence? God, is she inside the fence? Or, and, and what I saw was you're actually outside the fence and you're going in to free the people mm. who are in Satan's purgatory, in mm. Satan's um, in prison. They're, they're wow. imprisoned by Satan. And a lot of the, the barbed wire that is, it's their, it's their thoughts. 
And so I feel like when you sit down with people, Barbara, um, you're just going to start clipping, <laughs> like, wow. you know, clipping with your words, but the word of God is going to start clipping away the things that have people trapped um, because of how they're thinking. And some of it's, so some of it's, you know, just demonic presence where demons just have to be cast out, but you know, you can't um, cast out a mindset. You can't cast mm. out a, um, a, a wrong mind. Right. So that you're going to change people's minds with the word of God. That's what I see. And what's going to happen is they're going to find a break um, in the fence because of your clippers. So in Jesus name, we bless you with that. Wow. Um, I'm giggling because I, I, um, the names too pop out at me. I don't know. Maybe that's yeah. just something God does on this word on Wednesday because you guys' names. But um, I think there was a, it was a Pam. I believe your first name was Pam, but your last name was T, like T E A. Um, right? T E A, T A E, T E A. Um, but you're on YouTube. And um, what I, what I saw was I saw you just sitting like peacefully with your cup of tea. And, which may have been like your last season of just rest and just like at ease. But then I heard God say, I tell her I'm going to tee her off. Mm. And so, or I'm going to tee her up. I'm teeing her up. And so it was a different type of tee where you put the golf ball on the tee and he is ready to launch you. And I just saw the ball just poof, flying and that was you. And so um, whatever God's launching you, launching you into this season, um, Donna T. Okay. Thank you. Not Pam. Sorry. Thank you. Donna T. Um, but whatever God's getting ready to launch you in, it's going to be fast. It's going to be furious. It's going to be, um, you're going to be flying into this next season and yeah. it's going to be super exciting, but it's, it might take you a little bit like off guard. Like you're like, wait a minute. Woo. This is going a little fast, you know? And, and it's because, you know, he tees yeah, you up and amen. then boom, you're hit. And so, um, I feel like that's what, what's, what you're coming into. And so just get ready. Um, and when he says, you know, put the cup of tea down and get on the tea and let him launch you, it's time to go. It's time to fly. It's time to do everything that he has prepared you. In. You know, he, I just see that you've been in a season, season of preparing, like you've been, God's like had some really intimate, Amazing. sweet, um, times with you. And he has been teaching you. He's been, he's been instructing you. He's been, um, you know, he's been doing these things with you where now it's like launch time. And so, um, I bless you with that, Donna. Yeah. Amen. Tom Norton, I see you on here. So good to have you a part of this on YouTube. Um, what I saw with you was this incredible gift of humor. And I was like, and I know you, Tom, um, I don't know you well enough, though, when you preach, because I, I actually saw you preaching and I, I saw you making people laugh. And um, I don't know mm. if the enemy's ever told you this, but it's like, look how unspiritual you are. Mm. All you can do is make people laugh. You know, you're not very deep. You're not very wow. revelatory. Mm -mm. You're not very, you know, you're not because all that's what that's your only thing you can do is make people laugh. And that's not the only thing you do. But and, and wow. like I said, I've, I've not seen you preach. I don't know if that's part of, you know, your humor just comes out. Right. But what I heard God say is that your humor is actually um, totally strategic on God's part to wire you that way so that you can um, you help the medicine go down. Right. Like when, when you think about Robitussin or you think about Tylenol and you're giving it to kids, <laughs> um, you know, as adults, we might choke stuff down because we understand, mm -hmm. OK, this is going to make me feel better. Yes. But when it's a kid, they don't have they haven't connected the dots. Uh -uh. And what I what I'm hearing God say is that for the new believer, your humor is absolutely important because the wow. word of God won't go down um, without the flavor of humor. And so um, I don't know, is that, is that, I, I know you're a funny person. I, I really enjoy your presence, but I, I just didn't know if that's you, but um, God wants to encourage you to keep going, press forward. Yeah. You are significant and the impact you're making in the kingdom is way more than you've estimated. That's right. That's right. And I, I really feel that you've underestimated the value that you've brought to the kingdom in the last five years. Somehow the enemy has talked you into a real diluted um, uh, estimation of the impact you, that you've made. And so um, I just hear God say, step up to bat and swing. 
mm -hmm. over and over and over again. It doesn't matter if you miss, it doesn't. What does matter is walking out of the game. That does matter. But God is just saying, that's my boy. That's my man. That's my son. Um, and, you know, for every swing that we miss, it kind of doesn't matter because of the one that we hit. Yeah, and that's right. What I mean by that is not like even preaching delivery. What I mean is I saw I saw that ball that we're that you're hitting is actually a person. It's a person who um, was headed for hell, oh, and wow. now they're not. They're Come headed on. to eternity. Come on. And so God is using you in a very evangelistic way to help the newest people be able to walk out their faith, and um, that humor is a gift. It is, it is absolutely, absolutely, absolutely a gift. And being funny doesn't mean that you are not making a very deep impact inside mm -hmm. of a person. You're helping the word of God go down deeply and take root. So um, be encouraged by that. Yeah. And um, Julie, we'll, we'll play, pray for Les right now. She asked for prayer for Les. He's still in the hospital oh, with COVID yeah. and yes. 101 and fever. Name. And so we yeah. just, we just um, all agree right now yes, in the name in of Jesus, Jesus that Les will walk right. out of that hospital. Yeah, Les, we call you, um, we call yep, you healthy. Breathing and coughing. We command you yes, to stop God. and lungs clear up right now yep. in Jesus yep. name. And we yep. thank you, God, that yep. um, he will live and he will not yep. die in the name Praise of Jesus. You, and we, you, um, we just thank you for Les, God. We ask yes, that you God. just invade that yeah. hospital system, you invade the doctors, you yep. invade the nurses, give them That's strategy, so give them ideas, give them um, new ways of doing things to heal Hitless's body. And Father God, we thank you for his healing. We thank you. We for bless it, you for it. In yeah. Jesus' name. Charge angels over him mm -hmm. right now, Father, ministering angels. Yeah. God. Thank and we you, command God. the spirit of infirmity. We yeah. drive it out of his body, yeah. out of that hospital, out of that bedroom thank you, right Jesus. now. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Off Jesus. of the family members, God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that yeah. he is going to take a new breath right now. Yeah. Right now, because the prayers of the saints, yes, the prayers of yes. the righteous availeth much, God. And so we're standing on that right now. Thank you, that Jesus. a corporate um, group of believers right yeah. now are believing for Les's, for his health right now, for his recovery, mm -hmm. his full recovery right now. In fact, we we know it, God. He's he's gonna. Set, we're gonna get word that he turned a corner. Yeah, we're gonna get yep. word that he turned yep. a corner. Right now. And yep. everybody you, on here, if Thank everybody you, will just start praying, whether Thank you know you, less or not, start praying and Thank start you, God. just believing right now. Let's let's exercise the power of faith right now. Let's exercise the power of faith right now. We believe that his turnaround moment is right now. Yes. It's right now. Yes. It's right here. Thank it's you, God. right now. Thank you, God. Right now, Father, drive out every yes. Yes. sickness. Yes. Every sickness, God. We call every cell of his body and his immune Ooh. system to come stand to attention. Stand to attention in Jesus' mighty name name in the name of Jesus. You know, nothing can refute the name of Jesus. Nothing can overpower the name of that's Jesus. Right. The name that's of Jesus right. is the highest name there is. And so that's right. Thank you, God. Um, yes. Yeah. We bless you for that, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We bless you. Jesus. Okay. Um, Jenny Moon. I don't think I've seen your name before. Thanks for being on here. Um, I you know, your name is pretty easy to prophesy because <laughs> my name is Jenny, but also um, Moon. You know, I'm thinking that the first thing I thought of is, um, you know, sometimes I, you know, I say to my kids, how much do you love you? You know, how much do I love you? And you know, I love you to the moon and back. And um, and then I always say, but back again and back again, never ending back again. Like it's like, <laughs> it's like the moon isn't far, you know, it's yeah. not far enough. Yeah. Right. It yeah. feels so far, but it's not far enough That's when it comes so to love. And um, Jenny, God loves you to the moon and back and back again until it never ends. And mm -hmm. um, not because of what you do, not because of what you can produce for people, not because mm -hmm. of what you could make happen. All those, although those are extremely valuable and significant and helpful and their ways of serving um, all over uh, for Jesus. Um, but when it comes to his love for you, um, it is not, he can't quantify it. There's no way to quantify it because it's not quantifiable um, in relationship to what you do. Um, there's no, they're, they're, they're like on opposite, they're in opposite converse. They're not in the same conversation. What you do and God's love for you are not related at all. They're not related at all. And so, um, you know, I remember going through a season of my life where I told God, I, I said, I just fess up. I don't, I don't know love apart from doing, I don't know why I would be lovable 
apart for what I could do. Yeah. And so I said, but I'm ready for you to teach me. And he did. He walked me into a whole season of intimacy with him where he just said, I want you to lay on the floor for 30 minutes. I don't want you to pick up your journal. I don't want you to pick up your Bible. I don't want you to do anything. I just want you to put on a playlist. And I want, I want you to let me love you. Just let me love you. Let me walk with you. Know, and I had in my mind's eye, I just would walk on the beach with him. I would sit in the grass with him. I would, um, you know, sit and say nothing. I would just let him love me. And um, that was uncomfortable at first because I was always used to being the one who would drive our conversations or our time together, our devotional time together. So um, it was almost like putting somebody on the surgery table and then, you know, reaching up and helping the doctor with the instrument and surgery would be like a bad idea. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so it's almost like he was like, I need you to put anesthesia to the idea that you're going to get me to love you. Mm. Even wow. in our prayer time, even in like study, you know, like, Oh, look at me reading the word of God. So that must mean that God's approving. And we're really, we're really, you know, yeah. it's really working out between us because if that is our assurance, then the day that you don't read your Bible, we feel like mm -hmm. God's too far away. And that's not the truth. He's there no matter what. Right. Um, and I also felt like whatever you are doing in life right now, whether, you know, I feel like you have some achievements in front of you that are really cool, like some things that you want to do with your life and some projects. And God is saying, go for it. God is saying, shoot for the moon. And I don't like that saying, shoot for the moon, at least you'll hit a star or whatever that is. Like, I don't <laughs> like that. No, shoot for the moon. And if God wants you to hit the moon, you'll hit the moon. Right. Or you'll hit the sun or whatever. I mean, whatever else he wants you to hit. Yeah. Like <laughs> there's no such thing as I'm going to shoot far and hit lower and call it good. Like right. I don't get that. Um, because what God asks us to do, he always hits the mark because it's not us anyway. Right. So mm -hmm. whatever God's asked you to do, go aim, aim as high as he's told you to aim. Don't yeah. aim at what makes sense. Don't aim at something knowing that at least it'll land at the minimal level. Um, yeah. Just go for it. Do it. And so here you have these two separate things I've told you. And like over here, you, here's your doing and here's your accomplishing and God's saying, go for it. And then he's saying, oh, by the way, I love you a ton. And they're not, these aren't connected, mm -hmm. you know? So um, just go talk to him about that, journal about that. Um, maybe ask him to take you on a 30 day, you know, boot camp of like, hey, help me, help me know how much you love me. I want to know in my heart. Mm -hmm. I don't want to know in my head. I want to know in my so heart. And good. I believe that he'll meet you there. And I believe that it'll totally change your life. It changed mine. It changed how I see myself. It wow. changed how I see others. It changed how I see the gospel. It changed how yeah. I see God. It changed my prayer life because it wasn't like I was earning anything or having to like get back to something. Mm -hmm. It was just, it, it changed everything for me. So I believe that God wants to do that for you as well. That's awesome. Do you see anybody else? Yeah. Delane, okay. Delana, I think is your name. Um, I saw you on here earlier and I asked God about what your question was. Um, I think you wanted a word and I asked him, what would you like me to say to her? And he said, tell her that she hears me very well. That's what he said. <laughs> so, Amazing. so you hear him, yeah. you hear the Lord. Right. Um, and so I just want to dismantle any lie that would say um, that you're not hearing clearly, that you're not um, even understanding the word of God correctly. Like I just, yeah. in the name of Jesus, we just dismantle that and just remove that from you. Um, and I thank you, God, that you are speaking directly to her heart right now. Yeah. That you're, um, I even just see him like putting fibrillators on your spirit and just um, bringing you back to full life yeah. right now in the name of Jesus. And I don't know what has... Um, got you down or what has, um, I kind of see you got like, you got kicked in the shin a little bit mm -hmm. by something. And so, um, I just see Jesus. It's just super sweet image right now. Just, I see him just bandaging your, your shins up and just, you know, caring for you. And, um, and he's just saying, just slow down, slow down a little bit and let me love you. Just like what Jenny was just talking about, about the love, um, that will infilt infiltrate and just, um, just his unique love for you. Yeah. You know, he loves you uniquely and he loves you in the way that he loves you. And so um, allow him to do that. And I just see you coming into that, that point where you're just like, okay, I'm just going to stop and I'm going to let him bandage up my shins. Yes. I'm yes. going to let him speak into my heart. I'm going to let him charge my, my um, energy yeah. up. Um, 
you know, and, and I feel like I think I saw that you had a new baby possibly, or maybe it was a while ago. Maybe, um, maybe that's old news, but, um, I saw, I saw that weariness and I saw you allowing him to come in and be your energy and be your source. And where just as you plug in the phone into the outlet, you know, like, I mean, I can plug in my cord all day to this, but I have to have it plugged in on the other end somewhere to the power source. And so I see you um, plugging into the true power source, which, which is the Holy Spirit. Amen. And he is going to charge you and he's going to give you energy and um, in those dry places. And but just allow him to love you, allow him to come in and be your source, be your source of um you know, just energy and just love in the time of need. So that yeah. was for you, Delena. So good. That's great. Um, before we end here, let me give you a couple more. Um, Debbie Sullivan, I, I heard, I, I saw here that you wrote, I have not known the love of a father. And I believe Debbie, that you, all you have to do is just tell the Lord that you're ready. Like, Hey, I'm ready yeah. for you to unveil this revelation to me because it's not a revelation that you're going to get from yourself because we don't yeah. hold the revelation. Yeah, God holds no. the revelation. We only receive it. Right. It's like a, we get mm -hmm. to receive the like light bulbs going yeah. on, the gift of understanding something. And just so tell the Lord, like, I'm ready to become a daughter. Yeah. And I had to, I had to tell that to God too. I didn't have a father figure in my home that was like a safe father. And so I, the only love of father I've known is father God really. And there's been amazing people that have come alongside me, you know, male figures that are incredible, but, but the love of the father, I had to learn from the father himself. Um, so just ask him, you know, say I'm ready for that. And, um, he'll do that for you for sure. Um, and then, Oh goodness, there was somebody else. Um, one more on here. Let me just go through this really quick. Looking at this. That is Aiden and her Disney Plus channel. <laughs> oh, Kids are great. on the set. Mm -hmm. This is part of it. <laughs> well, hmm. let me look at this really quick. I'm just, I'm not ready to give up yet. I can't remember what it was. Come back to me, Jesus. Um, it might've been something you said, Tiff, that made me think of it. Um, Well, it's not coming back to me, but all is well. Yeah, I, I guess, you know, there's probably a lot of us on here who, I mean, I, I don't know anybody that doesn't have to walk through that, that doesn't have to walk oh, yeah. through the like, okay. Like we've got a theme going on right now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> because if we, okay, let me tell you something that's going to change your entire life. Ladies, when you become a daughter, <laughs> that will change your whole entire life. It will change how you see people, how you yeah. change your, see yourself, how you see God. And men, it's becoming a son. Mm -hmm. Because if we are not daughters and sons, then we have to be God. Yep. That means we have to be in charge. That means we're in charge of, of how our life goes. It means we're in charge of things. And that is a terrible place to be. That's why we have this neon mm -hmm. sign rest. The reason that we can rest, mm -hmm. this is one of our mandates here. This is one of our written decrees yeah. for To Tell Us Time Ministries is that we will um, work from a place of rest. We That's will. Right. We are working as sons and daughters. We are not waking up every day trying to make something happen. And the second we get there is when stress comes in. It's yeah. when irritation comes in. It's when all the things come in that you don't want to be a part of your life, your ministry, your family, or your mindset. Um, but when we're in rest, we can release every single thing. R-E-S-T, release every single thing. And we can receive every single yeah. truth yeah right and the truth of the matter is that we have a god who is not going to leave us high and dry he is a good father he i bet he just sits back and just laughs at the thought of us being um one of the reasons that eden is in here today is because this morning she was headed off to her um preschool group and she was like are you leaving are you going to come back when are you going to and she was just feeling so anxious about um about me going somewhere. I'm like, no, we're here on the property. You're on the property. And I, I couldn't figure out where it was coming from until her teacher here on the property told me, she just told me this morning that, um, that she told her that she was sad yesterday because her oldest sister, my, mm -hmm. my firstborn 18 years old is going to college next week. And so she was talking about, um, feeling sad that she was leaving. And so she was trying to control her environment. 
by like, okay, you're not going anywhere. Okay. I'm not, you know, and, and she was just starting to yeah. like grab for where's mom, where's dad, everybody, because her world was doing this. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I just kept telling her, you need to ask Jesus to help you right now yeah. because there was no amount of logic that I could tell her to help her understand that nobody was going to leave her alone, you know? And so what happens is these types of things that really affect our emotions, we carry with us. And sometimes we think, you know, like I have to lasso God into my mm -hmm. story. I have mm -hmm. to lasso God into yep. my life. I have to, I have to, I have to like woo him into my yep. world yep. in order to take care of me. Yep. And the stuff she was saying this morning, honestly, was super ridiculous. Like, are you leaving? Are you going to ever come back? I'm like, I'm going to the media room to do a, do a live. This is what we do every Wednesday, you know? And it's just common life for her. But because of the, I don't know if I want to call it trauma, but I'll call it, you know, emotional, whatever. Like she's she's thinking about her sister leaving. She's old enough to know that somebody's going to be gone from her household. And she's too young to know that everybody else is still going to be here too. Yeah. Like, so I, you know, life's stuff that happens to us in life can bring us to a conclusion, to a wrong conclusion that God is not here. And he's not, he didn't wake up with me this morning. He doesn't have my day lined out. He doesn't have, um, and I'll, I'll be super transparent with you guys getting ready to come here. I just told, cause there's so much going on, right? We have our intensive, we have the rallies, we have this book launch. We have so much that God's called us to do yeah. that I was just getting ready and said it out loud because I believe in out loud confession. I believe in out loud, like I need to clear this. And I just said out loud, I said, God, send me where you want me Yeah, because there's no way that I can, I'm not smart enough to organize all this. I'm not wise enough and with it enough to mm -hmm. put all these pieces together. Right. Right. And so it's like, but God, you already have a plan. So I'm just going to remind myself right now mm -hmm. that I'm in charge of nothing. I I'm in charge of nothing. I'm in charge of following you. Yeah. And so God, take me where you want me. Take, take this ministry where you want it. Like I'm, mm -hmm. we're following, you know, because I had to, and, and sometimes that's the confession we have to make because we have to remind ourselves that we are not God. We are not in control. I am a right. daughter. I'm a daughter. I'm not mm -hmm. God. I'm a daughter. And so daughters follow their fathers. Mm -hmm. Daughters trust. Daughters know that they're not going to provide for themselves. Somebody else is going to provide for them. So I don't know. I, I, I guess you just said it a minute ago, but like, that's the theme. Yep. You know, that's the theme. So we just yep. bless you with the spirit of sonship, you are a daughter, you are a son. God has not um, just kind of taken your life and played 52 card pickup with it yeah. and said, pick it up, make yeah, it all work. That's right. Make it all work. That's you know? right. He hasn't done that. No. He's actually putting everything in order. And he's He's the one that, you know, we're like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And then we yeah. pull the cards and it's not even the hand that we thought he was going to give us. Right. And you know what? We just, we work with what God gives us and we know that he's good. Yes. And he's good all the time. And the Bible says that, you know, you can make all the plans you want, but God is going to order your steps, right? So like, why would we stress out? Why would we strain yeah. and strive to like, you know, we have to do this and we have to make this happen. And in reality, it's like, no, let me back up a second. God, what do you need me to do today? God, what do you need me to put my focus on? God, where do you want me to put my talents and my giftings? Like, where do you want me to invest my time, my prayers? Right. Because I don't need to be praying the wrong prayers. I don't need to be investing my time in the wrong thing. I don't need to be pointing my talents and my gifts in the wrong spot. Like all of that's just a big old waste of time mm -hmm. because God's going to get his way anyway. Yep. So yep. we might as well that's right. start there. So just want to encourage you, you know, right. um, we have to remind ourselves every single day here at Tetelestai, like, Hey, we're not in control. God's <laughs> in control. And so we just have to make sure that we don't get ahead of him and start that's thinking right. that we are in charge of making great things happen. We're not in charge of making great things happen. God is in charge of that. Um, we're just following him. That's right. And so we bless you to follow him. He loves you. He has a plan for you. He yeah. has your life planned out for you. Jeremiah 29, 11, we look at that like, oh yeah, good plans for me. Blah, blah, blah. It's just, you know, such a common scripture, but how powerful is it? How powerful is it to say, okay, God, you have good plans for me to prosper me, not to harm me. Right. I mean, we could camp out on Jeremiah 29, 11 right. as a, as our theme this week, this month, for sure. And just know, God, this is what you said. That's and right. I believe it. I'm not going to be 
one of those Christians that just kind of gloss over that and go, oh yeah, I already know that verse. No, I'm, I need to know that verse. I need to know it. Right. Am I living, am I living in such a way that I know it Come on. or do I know that's it good. here? That's good. But Jen. if I'm living in a way that I know it, then I've had the revelation. And that's what yeah. I love about revelation is the word of God. They are words. We can have them here, but when we have them here in our spirit, then we get the fruit of that word. Yeah. The fruit that the things that grow out of us are the, the fruit of that truth living inside of us. Mm So um, press yourself, stretch yourself, meditate on the word of God, um, challenge your own mindset. Say, hold on a minute. I am acting like an orphan right now. What am I doing? Nope. I am not an orphan. I am a daughter. Say Mm -hmm. it out loud, confess those things, and it'll pull your spirit, your soul, and your body back into alignment with the father. So, all right. We love you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Hey, St. Louis, we want to see you. We want to see you in St. Louis. Be there September 16th and 17th. Go to John 1930 to register. It's going to be such an amazing time. Who do you know that needs a miracle? Yeah. Who do you know that needs a financial miracle? We're going to pray for everybody there for a financial miracle. Financial miracle, not just getting by, not just enough, That's right. but a financial miracle for his sons and daughters. So we'll see you guys there. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Love you so much. Bye bye.